Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second Australian Citizen Science Conference. My name is Jessica Harmson of ABC TV and it is my great pleasure to be your host and guide for the opening of this three-day event. Citizen science allows everyone to get involved in science. Hundreds of research projects around the country thrive on the help of novices, providing experts with valuable data about everything from outer space to life in our waterways. From the novice to the informed enthusiast to the professional, each and all contributing to a collective knowledge, sharing skills and harnessing the desire to be a part of the scientific discipline. This year, in only its second year, we bring together more than 225 delegates from across the country and indeed the globe. In the room, we have citizen science practitioners, participants, thought leaders and decision makers from Australia, New Zealand, Europe, the USA, Africa and Asia. On behalf of the Australian C Citizen Science Association, welcome. The conference organising committee has gone to considerable effort to make this a sustainable event. We've encouraged you as delegates to offset your travel by offering prizes and bringing your own water bottles. We've ensured our caterers use recyclable crockery and cutlery, and we've reduced our paper by only printing a select number of programs, just a few of the many initiatives to offset the environmental impact of this conference. For your part in that process, thank you very much. This conference is, of course, would not be uh, pop possible rather without our sponsors. Thank you to the University of South Australia, which has so kindly donated this venue. Our gold sponsors are the South Australia Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources, Inspiring Australia and the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage. Our silver sponsors are Inspiring South Australia and Queensland Water and Land Carers. Our bronze sponsors are the Australian Museum and Land Care Association of South Australia. And our supporter sponsorship is from Spatial Vision. Tomorrow night's public lecture is sponsored by the Government of South Australia and the opening reception will be sponsored by the Australian National University. Please join me now in a round of thanks for all of these parties. This conference wouldn't be possible without them. There will be some prizes up for grabs during the conference. As I mentioned earlier, we've made a concerted sustainability effort. Now we want to hear what efforts you've made. To be in the running for a prize, go to the competition tab on the conference app, follow the entry instructions and tell us exactly how you've offset your carbon footprint. Our prizes are sponsored by Spotterin and Phone Labs and winners will be announced at the closing ceremony on Friday. Don't forget to be a part of the social media conversation over the next three days. The conference hashtag is SitSciOz18 and the Twitter handle is at SitSciOz. And there's also the Australian Citizen Science Association on Facebook. Finally, folks, if you do hear the emergency alarm over the next three days, please stay calm and we'll direct you to the nearest exit. It's now my great pleasure to introduce you all to our Ghana elder, Uncle Lewis O'Brien, who will do the welcome to country. Marawijanga, Ghana Mean and Iwangani, Mani Nabuni Gani Atana, Nibirico, Mankalakala, Tandanya, Mianaku, Nate Yungandalia, Nate Yakanandalia, Padni Adlu Wadu. On behalf of the Ghana people, I welcome you all to Ghana country and I do this ambassador of the Adelaide Plains people. My brothers, my sisters, let's walk together in harmony. Uh, I should tell you a little bit about the Ghana people because I don't think they tell you much about us at all, but uh, let me try to tell you. When I was a lad, my uncle told me the Nukunu, the Nudri, the Ghana and the Ranga met together for two moons. They obviously discussed a lot of co uh, subjects and conference. The German missionaries wrote down our word for conference, which was Bumba Bumbalia. And Birko Mankalankala is ambassador. And our people used to learn about 20 languages because they even had an edict. You must speak the language of the person you're talking to. So there was a highly educated society and our education society is, rec uh, is repeated in our language and I should tell you some of the words and that shows you that. We have words like Yerikatata which is at random, Yerabulaluka which is four times. So we knew all the concepts and that's what our people taught. They taught you by concepts and you had to do the subjects. 
Not only that, they taught us to think twice. And you think, how do they do that? And they taught you to think. We've got a word called mukha, and mukha is oval. The word for the brain is mukha mukha. And so you have to work this out yourself, because they don't teach you this, because we have to learn. We do the opposite to what you do. And so we have to learn that mukha mukha has two ovals, and two ovals is what the brain is made up of. And then now people said this, if the brain has two ovals and thinks twice, we should too. And so they said, uh, let's invent this word called Yarra. To be an individual, you have to have reciprocity twice, both one to another difference. And you think, that's a hell of a mouthful. Well, let me explain that to you. You have two moieties. They're different names. They're different, but they're the same thing. They're two halves of a whole. Then why do we have moieties? I think that is even a clever thought in itself. We have moieties that tells you to marry distantly. Because they said, if you want an educated society, which we had, you have to have people marrying distantly so they come with few disabilities and they're easier to teach them to learn. And they accomplished that. Because even on some of the, if you look up on the YouTube, you'll see Maria Locke topped the exams in New South Wales in 1811. My great-great-grandmother learned to read and write in English in three months. And she taught her husband to read and write and he came from England. And they said to me, what are you talking about? And then I said, you can read it in the register of 1848. I didn't make this up. So you can see that there's signs around this country of educated people. Early days, two lads went from West Australia to Rome to become Benedictine priests. One of the lads won a silver medal for prizes in Latin. They were 11 and 7. One died there and he's buried in the monk's grave in Rome. So there's evidence of some of this thinking and some of this ability. Not only that, when I was a lad I learned about the weather. We have to remember phrases. And the phrases are like this. When the drosera blooms and perfusions, fires will follow. And then you think, why the drosera? The drosera needs a lot of rain. Therefore, if there's a lot of rain, there's a lot of undergrowth. And that means you have to get rid of the undergrowth because the undergrowth is the fuel for the fire. Even Captain Cook saw that in 1770. There was no undergrowth under the forests in this country because our people burnt them and cleaned that land and so they took care of the management of fire. And so we have these little statements we have to remember and that's what we live by, statements, because we know what our people tell us is generally pretty correct. And uh, then we learn to observe because we have to practice all the senses. We have to take them to the highest level we can achieve. Pity I didn't have a bit of string, but I thought I could manage with a bit of tape from the lanyards, but they got knots in them, so it's a bit hard. But I can tell you the theory behind this bit of string. Because the bit of string, it um, allows you to do these little games that you play. And people say, oh, you play games, do you? But then you teach kids by instructions. You say left over right, put it in your mouth, you know, you do that, and it'll go between your finger, then you throw the string away. But our people say this, it's not what you use, it's the way you use what you've got that makes a difference. To learn to observe, we have to practice, we have to practice with the string. And what you have to do, you get someone to show you a string rain and see if you can repeat it after they've done it, and you find you can't do it. And I used to have to do that every day as a lad. It took me three months before I could do the first trick. You know, you have to put the string over your fingers and you have to twist them around this way and that way and at least you get there, but then, you know, you know you've got to keep on going. And what's the art is this, it takes you three months to do the first, then you get to two months the second and you keep on going, but what you're aiming at is two minutes. This is only the vehicle to teach you to observe. And that's what our people are on about, teaching you to extend your eyesight. And so what happens in the end, I watched a movie and saw a bloke do a string trick on the movie. And after I watched him a couple of times, I thought, gotcha. Now he can't talk to me on the screen and I can't talk to him, but he can't stop me from learning what he does. And that's the secret of what you're doing. Then I found out, because I taught around schools for about 12 years, 
Most of the kids didn't know what I was talking about, but one group did, which was pretty amazing. The teacher came to me and she said, all these kids know what you're talking about. I said, wow, they do. And she said, you know what they are? I said, no. She said, they're all musicians. I thought, wow. So therefore it shows you, you don't only have to play with string, you can play with music. Music teaches you to observe. All you need is a vehicle. You can play origami, or, but you need a vehicle to practice the vision. Then we do, well, people know about Chinese whisperers, but when you say the word in the front, and that 20 kids down the line, they'll say it different at the, in the end. We play that whispering too, but we have to say the same word here and finish up with the same words at the end. So really you've got to develop all your senses and your, to a high level. And so that's what our people practice you at or teach you to get you to practice as a child. You learn to smell, you learn to observe, you learn to do all these things that are very beneficial to you as a human and as citizens of this country. It would be great if you could all do that and know what's going on in your country. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Lewis O'Brien.